தேவரீர் எங்களோடு கூட இருக்க காரணங்களை ஸ்தோத்தரிக்கிறோம் கத்தாவே நீர் பேசுவீராக Lord I pray that you will speak forth your word to this congregation who seeks your face of father thank you jesus we humble ourselves sir, and we submit to your pure inspiration in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen the title of today's sermon is water in the rock water in the rock hallelujah can you see the picture mighty man of god moses huh? strikes the rock and water gushes out from it hallelujah feeding millions of people there were at least 40 lakhs people in the journey in the wilderness journey for minimum the bible scholars are giving a minimum data according to the scriptures that should be at least 40 lakhs people and think about the animals and the flocks animals sheep camels huh? horses i don't know what, what and all animals were there okay so millions of living beings are traveling in a desert in a wilderness think about it hallelujah in a, in a family of three or four people or five people we get discouraged with a lot of things okay think about moses he was the father of 40 lakh people and also livelihood because without the livelihood people cannot survive think about his fatherhood his responsibilities his role and responsibilities is so high hallelujah can we move to the verses shall i next so this chapter 17 verses 1 to 7 i'm going to read a few verses from there and i'm going to meditate from here hallelujah then all the congregations of the sons of israel journey by stages from the wilderness of sin according to the command of the lord and camped at refidim so now where are they camping they are camping at a place called refidim oh is that a beautiful location or streams of water flowing or rivers flowing no just dry land called refidim <laughs> dry land to dry land dry land to dry land wherever they see in all directions 360 degree view all dry land nothing impressive no trees if you see any tree it is all gone burnt by the sun and there was no water for the people to drink no water for people to drink so there should be at least 3 million gallons of water to feed these people million gallons of water 3 million gallons of water to just keep them hydrated think about it the demand my dear brothers and sisters the demand was so high the population was so high and israelites were very good in multiplying okay the problem that they why they were why the egyptians stood against the israelites because they were more productive huh? in goshen goshen and that tribe expanded in millions and the pharaoh got upset he was afraid that this people whom we allowed as shepherds in our land will overtake the kingdom so that's why they were made slaves over a period of time so these people this high population and stiff necked people are facing a trouble in their journey we should understand that the need was great gallons 3 3 million gallons of water was required to feed the people feed the children feed the livestock the sheep the camels the cows and everything okay so what what do we understand here so the people quarreled with moses so they started fighting with moses all these days they saw admired moses performing miracles signs and wonders he was a hero okay now they are quarreling they are fighting bible says it said give us water so that we may drink and moses said to them why do you quarrel with me why do you test the lord that is his question man of god is asking why do you quarrel with me why do you test the lord i'm going to explain that later but the people were thirsty for water and they grumbled against moses and said why is it that you have brought us up from egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst is that your intention moses 
Is that why you came down from Median Desert to rescue us from the Pharaoh, immediate enemy, and you killing us in the desert? Is that your plan? Is that your master plan? Was that your actual plan? And you were trying to show yourself as a hero, as a deliverer of, of, of the Israelites. So Moses was questioned on his intention. How do we all know Kangal Sandega Pat? Sandega Pula Pat. Puritanga, all know Kangai, Mani the Gil, so treated to put in Mani the Gil Sandega. So Moses was broken. Forty days he lived with God in Mount Sinai. But he couldn't tolerate when people, his own beloved people, questioned his intention. Do you understand? Do you understand? When you come closer and closer to God, you become more and more sensitive also. Do you understand? You become a very sensitive, emotional person. Why? Because your soul and spirit is broken by the presence of God. What happens when the word of God comes? It penetrates into your soul and deals with your spirit. Yeah? It penetrates your soul and deals, operates in your spirit. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, do you understand? So you become sensitized to what is being spoken on you. That's why we, men of God are very emotional beings. Okay, they cry a lot. In front of people or, or alone, they will cry. And Moses cried. He cried out to the Lord saying, What am I to do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. So the quarrel came to a point where people took the stones and they were about to throw him. And I am imagining now, now Caleb and Joshua should have come and protected Moses. They are coming and protecting him. Standing in front of Moses and protecting him so that he is not killed by his own people. Think about it. In wilderness, why were they behaving like this? Because they are frustrated people, frustrated. Then the Lord gave a plan. Hallelujah. So now we are going to meditate. Why this frustration comes? What is the background? As you know, they are being moved in stages towards the promised land. So the promised land has been given to you and to me as well. Heaven is our promised land. Paradise is our, par is our promised land. That is where you, you and I are our directions. Our northern direction towards heaven. Hallelujah. We know where we are going. But is the journey pleasant? Some, not always. Not always. There are times when there are no there is no water. When our lips are dried up, when there are more questions than answers in our lives. Do you understand? So when when you are when when a Christian goes through questions in his life, challenges, failures in his life, don't think it is abnormal. It is very, very normal. Hallelujah. Do you understand? It's very normal to have questions. Why is this is happening, Lord? Why did you permit this in my life, Lord? Why am I facing dry land? Why am I sent through the wilderness? Lord, tell me. Tell me. Speak to me. Is wilderness in your plan, Lord? That is so many people are crying to God. And over a period of time, people get discouraged. A, man, a person who was writing songs and doing song huh, gave up his faith. You know why? What you know what the reason was? That he is having questions which are unanswered, which people are around him were not answering him. So a person who wrote hit songs, Christian devotional hit songs, gave up his faith. You know why? Because of the frustration of life. Life brings frustration. And if you don't have people of good counsel around you, who can give you the whole counsel of God from the scriptures, okay? If you do not have pastors and men of God around you who understands at least a little bit of the whole counsel of God, okay? Your faith will stagger, will, will be in trouble. That's what has happened to that person who wrote a who wrote those little song songs and so all positive huh, motivational speak pre preaching doesn't 
satisfy a frustrated soul in the land of wilderness. You need to have the full counsel of God. For that you have to have an open mind to understand the heart of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So women and children are crying. Men are quarreling. Moses is saying, why are you coming to me? Moses was a vulnerable person in the wilderness. He was surrounded by enemies, surrounded by noise, a quarrel. And in the midst of this, God is speaking to him. My dear brothers and sisters, when life is challenging, when life is a wilderness, did God create wilderness when he created uh, the earth? No, it was a garden. Wilderness was never a plan of God. Wilderness was created by joint venture of Adam and Eve and the serpent. Joint venture. You understand? Joint venture. So wilderness was never in God's divine original plan. Original plan there is no, no, no wilderness. But after the work, after for the fall of mankind, wilderness is permitted. Even a Christian is walking through the wilderness to the heavenly Canaan. Amen. So now God speaks. My dear brothers, I want you to position yourself now as if you are the Moses now. I want you to realize that God is considering you as that Moses in the story now. Okay? Now when I am pressed, when you are pressed from all directions, when you have more questions than answers, when there is more noise than music, what should you do? Cry to the Lord. Cry to the Lord. Ask, ask him what to do. No, it is not the Pharaoh who is the enemy. Pharaoh is already defeated. Right? The real enemy, the first enemy has been defeated. Sin has been defeated. You have been saved. You are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The Pharaoh was defeated. But now, after baptism, you are walking in faith. Now, here are the challenges, frustrations are coming. Okay? Now the enemy has changed. It is a nature which stands against the people of Israel. Right? Dry land, wilderness, no water, no food. And the expression that the people were giving was murmuring, frustration, quarrel. So, my dear brothers and sisters, the, the solution comes from the Lord. The, in the fifth verse, the Lord says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Pass before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. So you don't go alone, Moses. Take like-minded people in your life. Hallelujah. Be with like-minded people in oneness of spirit. Those who can join with you in oneness of spirit will give you great boldness in faith. Hallelujah. Whom should I fellowship with? Whom should I join in the spirit and pray, intercede huh? and cry out my, my things to the Lord should be in with the people who are coming together in the, with the same vision, the same plan to proclaim the name of the Lord. Do you understand? So join with the elders who stand, who stand with you. Okay? And then, and take in your hand your staff. Moses, don't forget the staff that I made it into a miracle staff. Hallelujah. The shepherd staff. I made it into a miracle staff. You know, you remember Moses? That, mir that miracle staff is the one which converted the drinkable Nile water, Nile river water, into undrinkable water. God's curse came through the staff given to Moses. The whole beautiful, very tasty river Nile became undrinkable, became blood. Just with a touch. Now, Moses, don't forget that stuff. You have to be in right fellowship with the elders. Like minded people, oneness of spirit. Maintain oneness of spirit. It's better to have two people together one in oneness. That's why when two or three gather together in my name, there I am. There is no question. I am there present. 
the invisible person is already present with you when two people can unite together just two people it can be husband and wife two friends ha huh? anyone so and i will stand before you and take in your hand your staff with with which you struck the nail and go behold you know what when you do these two things when you come together in unity when you when you don't forget the staff which performs miracles behold what will happen i will stand before you there on the rock of oren rock, rock at oren and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink hallelujah and moses did so in the sight of the elders of israel hallelujah hallelujah nothing makes sense nothing makes scientific sense but moses would be god did not show a location my son this is the place mark this and drill down so that water will gush out that is a possible scientific solution okay supernatural but still makes some sense logical sense but you know what god said go to the mount hore there i will be standing you know me you know my presence because you be with me in for 40 days hmm? in mount sinai with me so you will be immediately able to sense my presence you know when i come when i leave you okay for him it was not just a imaginary world it was real god was real for moses hallelujah for how many of you god is real for me god is real hallelujah even if they even if they put thousand if they find thousand mistakes in this king james version or niv version i'm not worried you know why because i know the author <laughs> i know this god hallelujah i am not worried whether king james version or uh, nasb version has spelling mistakes or commas or full stops or translation issues because i know the person whom this bible is talking about hallelujah hallelujah do you understand my dear brothers and sisters i know who i serve hallelujah i am not beating around the bush hallelujah i am not just sent by an organization to preach to you about a god no no organization has sent me god himself has given me the burden to serve you hallelujah like when you are serving god you have experienced god not because of someone saying but in your life when you have touch points precious touch points with god don't forget that don't forget your staff don't forget your miracle staff don't forget the touch points where miracles were produced in your life my dear brothers and sisters hallelujah don't forget the staff which divided which which made the nile river undrinkable amen hallelujah amen and water will come out of it so that the people may drink and moses did so in the sight of the elders of israel last week i think i was mentioning about what and all moses should have studied in egypt, egypt because he was a prince of egypt he got the best class of education the bible scholars have the archaeologists have found which university moses was educated do you know that in egyptian university there is a name of that you have forgot the name but he was educated there he was trained there where what in what in literature multiple languages in wrestling in games in sports huh and so warfare strategy those were the education that the princes of egypt were sent through mandatory so this guy to go and hit the rock with a wooden piece with a wooden stick for such a crazy idea Do you understand don't think only we are educated engineering first class he was much educated we are enjoying the best literature from genesis to deuteronomy 